Welcome to another smoke box presented by Be Real TV. I'm Be Real, aka Dr. Green Thumb, here with my special guests, Rhett, Maddox, and Babu of the world's famous Beat Junkies. This group is composed of four members on this stage right now. You got my man Babu. You got J Rock. You got Mellow D. And you got Refmatic. So y'all ready? All right. Everybody give it up for the world's famous beat junkies. One time for your mind. Yo, yo. Yes. Oh, thanks I mean, for having us, dude. This and, is crazy. You know, we got DJ Nels in the back Nels. back there. Um, I got to tell you like this, right? If you don't know these gentlemen on the West Coast, they are one of the premier DJ crews. What You know, like easily could be considered one of the best. You know what I mean? And I have history with these two gentlemen. You know, uh, much of you guys might know that we had a radio show called Soul Assassins Radio on 92.3 The Beat mm -hmm. in Los Angeles once upon a time. Yes. And these two gentlemen, plus DJ Melody, who is not here, um, they were the DJs of that radio show. And it's good to be with uh, both of you guys in this whip. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you guys, you guys, uh, um, it's incredible what, you know what you guys have have done throughout your 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 careers as DJs. I mean, you both DJ for legendary crews, legendary artists. You stand alone as DJs as some of the most highly respected in the game. I mean, and and you and you took that and brought it as education and created a school or you know are a part of school. It teaches kids how to get down and how to touch or existing DJs how to touch up their style, man. And I got to commend you fucking guys on that, man, because that's B. awesome. Thank you, B. No, thanks. And uh, shoot, congratulate to, to you and everything you've been doing, man. I mean, to be honest with you, I think of being a DJ on the West Coast and, you know, Soul Assassins has been like a huge influence on all of us. Yes. B. And, um, you know, you've seen the things that you guys are doing, man. It, it really inspires us. I mean, being here at the compound and being fans of everything you do you know beat junkies we're uh we're, we've been inspired because we're we're also just doing things independently funded as right. well right um doing things that we super passionate about and uh, and like kenji was telling us like we, we we're not taking a lot of paychecks on this it's, it's a right. that's total passion project we're doing from our record pool to the school to our online school and um you know we really enjoy it but uh you know it's 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 um something we're trying to figure out every day and uh we're still just happy to be djing still man yeah i mean it's 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 an art form you know that that uh, i think sometimes people from the outside they don't really you know get how you know how much of an art form it actually is from you know doing the vinyl type of sets to you know doing serato sets and there is a big For difference sure. Sure. You know what I mean? I think with the vinyl, you know, it shows that your old school prowess and like your ability to work around shit without any of the the help that Serato and the other ones, you right. know, provide. Right. You know, for for DJs who maybe don't know, how, you know, the other the, the original aspect of it. For sure. But you know, how how do you feel like that? Did have you do you feel that the the technology has made DJing you know better easier more uh, efficient yeah I, I mean we love it we 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 support technology and uh I, I, it feels like not that long ago when we didn't have companies making stuff for what we do yeah. you know what i'm saying from, right. from the beat making game to the dj game we were always makeshifting something to to be what we want and now nowadays it makes stuff for us and i love the technology so but i think like you had to be responsible with all that power, you right. know? And so at, at our school, for instance, like if you're in our program, we do um, five, the first five levels are vinyl. Right. 
you know we that's teach awesome. them and we teach them how to mix by ear and they they learn dexterity because that's that yeah, was, that's, that's what DJs used to be about like, that's the foundation you know and a lot of days cats are just so heavy-handed because of serato and and relative mode like things don't skip anymore so yeah it and makes it easy but you know I, I feel like you know you have that little experience at least of understanding how vinyl works and then we give them the laptops and there's this appreciation of like right. You know, and then they kind of te- they, they treat the technology as more. It's not. It doesn't become a crutch. It becomes like something that is an extension. You know, you know. And I love Serato. Come on, doubles of everything. B. We got yeah. doubles of everything. I mean, yeah. and see, that's you know? that's the thing I was gonna say is that uh, you know, Serato allows you like programs like Serato allow you to flip through the sounds and the shit, right. so you can get to your routine faster. You know what I mean? Whether uh, sure. on the opposite end, if you are doing that vinyl. You would have to be extra fast to flip another record to put that specific sound on. That's that's the cool thing For about sure. the techno the, the the technology that has come in that allows a DJ to be a little bit more free because he don't got to worry about flipping that that vinyl. No, and sure. and I mean, as you guys know, because you guys started with vinyl, you don't got to carry all them fucking crates oh, no. and worry about some <laughs> bastard. Stick in his hand in your fucking crates. How many records did someone fucking low key try to take from you, your guys's crates, dude? No, that was the worst. Traveling with records? Yeah, yeah. Dude, a lot that of DJs was with a lot of bad backs. If there was no technology. Then. No, I would have a I would have a box of records like for Dial for instance. I'd have a box of records that would get checked in in this anvil type case that I would put like a one of them little zip ties on that would always get cut open and someone went through my shit anyway. Yeah, that's where you knew. Whatever I had in that box be, I would have the equivalent on my shoulder I would carry on with playing. Because God forbid... Yeah, somebody fucking snatch it. And pre Serato, right? Yeah. Pre Serato, like, dude, we lost our records. You're yeah. fucked. Especially, like, you know, so... Yeah. Especially with 911, you know, you can't... You Before, you could used to lock your animal cases. Now you can't. So, yeah. So, you know, cats would be like, you know, you're checking out. Get your get your case from the from the luggage. Open it up. It's like, oh man, half my record. I remember hearing Muggs like lost a whole oh, crate, uh, like just straight, yeah. just gaffled all his shit at the oh, airport. Yeah. Fuck yeah, at the airport. You know, yeah. he put his bag down for a half a second to talk to shake somebody's hand. Some dirty motherfucker came behind and yeah. snatched it when they weren't looking. Wow. I want to ask you guys, um, how is it uh like teaching these young kids vinyl? Because you know, like we're living in such a like um you know like add era where like people don't even want to sit there and watch a one minute video so like the patience is not to where we had it because we're living in the phone era how hard is it to teach these kids vinyl nowadays you know it's crazy now is before we when we built the curriculum before we opened the school actually chalk and i had we argued a lot about like what it was going to be how our curriculum was going to be in terms of vinyl chalk was like man you gotta understand babs fools just got laptops they're gonna want to use them shits in the first month man we'll do vinyl for like i don't know four weeks maybe yeah. you know and i was like i'm ripe to teach and i don't know any different mind you you know chalk is a veteran yeah been teaching for 10 plus years yeah. um you know but i honestly felt like i go dude if the beach junkies are open to school chalk dude we gotta spend like a big part of the curriculum on vinyl mm-hmm. and we gotta teach it our way you know what i mean and we fought and we fought and we found this middle ground where we said okay we'll do the first five levels of vinyl babs but we gotta be careful, man. We, people might walk in here and walk right the fuck out because they wanna learn on, they wanna use controllers, they wanna use laptops. And I'm like, but the funny thing that happened was, it kinda set us apart. It made us yeah. unique. It made us well, special, yeah. well, you know it, what I mean? It, it like, made it real. Because yeah. you guys are, are teaching foundation skills, you know, that that allow you to get to that. I mean, sure, you could teach somebody Serato in a fucking second, for sure. You know what I'm saying? But like, I think you have a deeper appreciation when you do start learning from vinyl and i think you know that I, I think one of the things is that when you start as a kid it's sort you absorb it quicker i think For sure. you know what i mean because yeah, if you look at some of those little kid djs now the, the two girls and the other two girls mm-hmm. on serato they are fucking beasts right right so i i can imagine if you teach them on vinyl at an early age they're gonna beast out even heavier for sure. when they get on the Serato and, and all that shit. No, for sure. Yeah. It, it's a challenging thing, I think, for a lot of people. The new generation is looking for immediate gratification for yeah. everything, but I find out our student body really appreciates the challenge, and, and it's something different. And, and yeah. you guys can all know what I'm saying. To to mix by ear, and not just match waveforms that are going by on the screen like yeah. Dance Dance Revolution. Like it's 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 something. And then to like literally, you know, you're touching sound and you're dropping a beat on the one. 
I've got, you know, we have students as young as eight. We have students as old as 50 plus. You know, I'm, I'm watching like low key grandmothers here doing doubles. It's amazing. <laughs> That's Shit. fucking awesome. And we talk about everything's real historic driven. It's techniques, mechanics, and history. So we teach a baby scratch. We talk about. Uh, you know, we, we talk about Grand Wizard Theodore, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we talk yeah, yeah. about our queuing system and even mixing two turntables, you know, and having a peekaboo system. We talk about Grandmaster Flash heavily. We talk about Jazzy Jeff and, and yeah, we try to I tell mean, them the timeline of this. Because Flash had the marking system. Yeah, he, I mean, like, people don't realize Flash was the fucking god. Like, yeah, you know, like, it. you know, and I really want the new generation to understand, like, Motherfuckers are going to junkyards and and soldering shit, creating shit. Well, I think that's the problem today you know? is that some of the kids that are getting into some of the art and shit, you know, whatever aspect of it is, don't necessarily they're not necessarily students of the game like people used to be. Yeah, for sure. It's like they, you know, they want to skip levels and shit like that, which is cool because some some have the natural ability to to skip those levels right but there's others who need to learn where it came from so that they have like an appreciation for it and to cultivate and develop that creativity and talent i think that's know, part of being a great right is, yeah. is to is to know your history i think like you know i, yeah, I, I never so. knock a cat for where they're t dropping the timeline being sometimes they go out of order because of things like they're that talented or they right. they're just gifted but Gosh, they only get better when they go back and, and right. realize, you know, when, yes. when Kobe hit that point and, you know, he was able to talk to Michael and really talk to him and go back down the timeline and understand why they were great. And, exactly. You know, so I think that goes for everything. You talk to chefs, it's the same thing. You talk to MCs, it's the same I, thing. I think the fact that you guys aren't skipping steps, that you are teaching from the foundation aspect is, is amazing. Because that's how you guys learn. Yeah. Um, yes. I mean, you have to learn foundation. I mean, because, like, again, if you uh, start in Serato, Sure. Sure. I mean, what happens when that goes away? Right. But Which then, it won't. But but even then, if you don't <laughs> if you don't know how to really learn, even how to you, you don't have, you can't have build skills. Don't know how to learn how to rock a crowd. Yeah. That's still still you know, song selection and stuff. Absolutely. And then also like you know, if your timing, if you don't have timing, also you know, vinyl will help your touch. So as Baz would say, when you get onto more controllers and Serato, you just you'll be more you'll be if you were a good DJ on vinyl, you'll even be, become a better DJ on Serato. If you're okay, DJ and Serato, you're gonna be terrible, terrible in vinyl. Yeah, you know? and, yeah, and it's only true. right. I mean, yeah. because like it's the junkies. Like, I mean, the first time I ever was introduced to the junkies was at Fat, like Fat Beats. You guys were working at Fat Beats back in the day, you know, yeah. Vermont. <laughs> like, yeah. it's only right. I, I, I wouldn't expect anything less, and I don't think anybody else would. Yeah, honestly. Now, you guys are some of the most well-rounded DJs. All, all of the crew. I mean, you guys can rock clubs, you can do exhibition style clubs, and, and let me explain the difference. Like, you know, club you go into, some DJs will DJ for themselves and the guys standing up against the wall and the dance floor clears. <laughs> These guys don't do that. These guys know how to rock a party and keep it there. They also know how to do exhibition style DJ where no one came to dance. They came to watch what the DJ does, right? These guys have done that. But, you know, there's also a, th a third aspect, right? They, you know, you guys have also been the DJs for um, for artists like Dilated Peoples and, you know, visionaries and, visionaries and, Bobo. and Bobo and stuff like you do. For you sure. know, you have Cypress Junkies with Bobo. So you guys have, you know, done all aspects of DJing. What, what do you think it takes or what would you tell a, a DJ coming up? You know, what would make them a well-rounded DJ to be able to hit all those aspects like that? Because, I mean, that's not everybody can do that. There's not there, there's not every, you know, not every DJ can go DJ a club and then go DJ for an artist. It's just for a sure. whole different get down. For sure. And in, the, in, in this day and era, in the landscape is different. I don't know if it's, you know, I don't know how many Cypress Hills or Dilated Peoples are left out there that really right. uh, are, are looking for that part of their group or that part of their sound and i'm not knocking the future generation it is you know we're at a different point in the in the circle you know yeah but i do feel like uh you know for all djs out there in general there's more opportunities and more ways that you could be a successful dj on so many different levels right you know so it, it's wide open but i think the thing is like what new djs have to understand is that you know uh we're historians you know we, we track the movement we have this obsession about music and the love for music and sharing it with people which i think is really important and uh, 
And you got to practice, man. Practice you gotta for practice. sure. You got to be practiced. For sure. You got to be tight. You got to be, you know, teaching. practice your craft. Yeah. But, I, I, you know, I, I think one thing to add to that is that you have to understand the moment. You know what I mean? Like, understand where you are, who you're DJing for. For sure. And, and what the role is. Because, you know, there's there's people that go and overdo the shit. For sure. You've, we've all seen that, right? Yeah, for Fucking, sure. And then there's people who underplay it. And they don't recognize that they're in the fishbowl and they might be just doing a mix that they would do in a club fucking yeah. setting and, 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 you know, know the scenario. I yeah, think. and never stop learning. You know, we're, yeah. we're forever students. I, I, you know, I don't, you know, I'll forever be a white belt in my mind and I always try to, like, be inspired and learn and continue. You know, I, I can't say enough. I think a big part of the way we are is because of the mix masters. Yeah. You know, they have They were a big influence on influence every DJ. All yeah. the DJs, as far as I'm concerned, in Southern California, all of us growing up, like, and which, they were always well rounded. Which mix master did you guys connect to the most, do you think? I mean, personally wise, it would be Julio G, because we all, you know. Salute to the master over there. Yeah. But we've been lucky enough to, like, to build with Tony G, yeah. yep. Aladdin, the Grand Wizard right there. Uh, Shit. Joe Cooley, uh, you know, Battle Cat. Um, I mean, we've been Ralph Fam, you know, just, we, we, you know, we've all been lucky enough to, 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 to build with them and DJ with them and even learn from them. So, yeah, Babs is right. I, you know, the junkies were kind of like a, like a, like a direct, not say a direct, but a correlation of the Mix Master. Yeah. You know, we, we saw them as the ultimate crew and we, you know, not knowing we became you know we, we kind of became a crew yeah. how did you guys be how did the people <laughs> come to be uh J people that might not know well j-rock uh he's the one that started the group he started the name always wanted the crew uh uh and it was started in 1992 uh and basically people always wonder why he had that green lantern logo you know he used to work at a comic book shop and so when he when he, when he, he always said when if i always start you know ever started a crew, we're wearing these rings. And the funniest thing is that we went, once we started DJing, you know, we go, you know, go to clubs, we're wearing the rings. And then especially when we were starting new battles, we start wearing, you know, everybody said, who's these guys with the Green Lantern rings? Huh. And stuff like that. So we've been very lucky to make an impact. You know, you know, Babs is a, is a, is a DM, DMC West Coast champion. He's an ITF uh, world champion. Uh, scratcher and beat juggler, you know. Uh, Melody's a world investic world champion. Uh, we got like champions. D -D -styles, D -styles, yeah, you, you, know. guys, you guys are like, I mean, I look, I think there's like a Mount Rushmore of DJ crews. And, and I you think guys are definitely there, yeah. I think there's, I think it's like the junkies, the, the pickles, and the executioners. Yeah. And, and, and my, that's just my opinion. I, I, I would say that a lot of people would agree with that now all day. Yeah. And in and, and the in the in the spot is subjective. You know what I mean? Like, you know, everybody <laughs> will mix the three on who they think is where, but it's those three for sure. Yeah. For, well, you know, props to, to to the pickles and the and the executioners for yeah, sure. I mean for all sure. you guys are fucking like you know, on a whole different level of DJing. Who like when you guys were in battle mode, who was who, who do you think was your biggest uh was what was your hardest battle against? Uh, I would say, you know, rest in peace, Rock Raider. That's that's a cat. Like I always, yeah. it's always one of the hardest to ever battle against. You know, even though when I get one against him, it was a DMC format, so it's like we all went up there and did our six minute thing, and then we're out. It wasn't like getting to go head to head. I didn't right. get, I didn't get to. Maybe it was good for me that I didn't get to go head to head, but <laughs> but Raider was a tough one to beat in any kind of style of competition. Rest in peace, Raider. But he was always just fierce and in the yeah. moment, kind of tough to beat his style. Yeah. Really, hard, really tough. It, it, super, super crazy showman and super technical at the same time. Like he does shit that sh would shock you as a DJ, but then it would translate to like someone who never seen DJing at the same time. Yeah, he always had that great balance of just like on a DJ tip. I couldn't knock it because you know what? He just did a sick ass beat juggle, but he did it behind his back and under his leg and with his mouth. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, yeah. the, and, the, and the person who couldn't digest the beat juggle just just saw this rhythmic spectacle of acrobatics. So it was. Type of dude you never want to meet in a fucking yeah, battle, man. The looks and like fucking a, yeah, you know, oh, yeah. middle finger, like yeah. just all kinds of shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, I want to ask you guys about how you take in the. You guys are not only teaching turntablism and DJ skills, but you guys are actually teaching history. For sure, it, it doesn't come with just just the technical side. You're teaching the history, and um, 
I think that's very important. I also want to ask about how you guys have taken the school online and are basically teaching online now for people that might not be in Southern California that can't come to the fucking shop, uh, the school. Right. I'll talk a little bit about that. Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, what I always say to our students and, and when we're talking to people about trying to get them to come to school is like, we don't promise them that they're going to be professional DJs after this, but we do teach them that they're going to fall in love with DJing and feel like they're cut from this cloth that we all understand. I mean, you you went down the DJ rabbit hole a few years oh, yeah. ago, and obviously knows. You know what I'm saying. But there's a lot of things that we do and know as DJs that you know the internet doesn't tell you or put you up on game. That you that just comes from years of being in a record store, hanging out with each other, counting bars and beats over and over and over. And you know what I'm saying. All these crazy things we do as DJs, and that's what we kind of show them at the school is just how to fall in love with DJ. And, yeah. You know, as far as we, you know, we teach very genreless. You know, we, we tell them, it's, you know, we're not going to tell you what to paint, but we're going to teach you how to hold that paint, you know, that paintbrush properly, teach you how to mix that paint properly, and you can go create what you want, you know, after you've, like, worked on these skills. And hopefully, you know, like, we rub off on them, you know, yeah. we, we, we teach them how to have a, have a better taste. But really, we try to keep it very textbook and very, like, all those things that we got in the garage when we used to hang out. You guys must see a lot of young, good, up-and-coming talent. I'm super. Our, our students are crazy. Pretty I have this. Gr- I have this group of kids who are like out of control. Like, um, you know, what's the youngest DJ you got there? We have eight year olds. Fuck. But I have I have this group um, who've been with us for almost two years now, and it's it's three girls and one boy, and they're beasts. They're just so beast. They're they're, they're my most advanced students at school. I'm teaching them like crazy scratches and beat juggles. I can't. What I love it. about that is knowing that that that's happening. The that part of the culture will never die turntablism will always be there because i think once you get it like if if it's like a passion or or like it's it's something that you know you're an enthusiast and you get into it and you start fucking with it and you get it it opens up a whole different thing for you and 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 you'll continue to do it and uh i think that's why turntables and the 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 art of turntablism will always really, fucking exist really beautiful, because man. of that and that's no, great because sure. you guys are a part of keeping that going no this new generation i think they're intrigued by it you know shouts out to the to the young homies uh world champions uh dj reyna and k swizz and it's funny these kids who are the world champions now i really look at who their influences are yeah and they they look about 10 years and and more back yeah they're looking at cats like from our generation and one's a little after us and like they're looking at the most technical cats yeah because that's really where where it all comes from you know and like the recent styles aren't really what's moving them it was like something from 10 plus years ago and like and and what it produces them to do it blows my mind so shouts out to the youth that are all into shouts out to our young students all our students at bj ios how much gratitude like how much like just Proud, how proud does it feel to like you know when, when you see them start from like they can't even do nothing and then like a couple years later they're like fucking beasts how does that feel must be a lot of humbling must, yeah, yeah it must very, be a lot of like a, it's very humbling. like a gratitude in that very I, you know at first like it was weird when we first had the idea of teaching i wasn't ready and then we instead started our first business this is in 2014 we started the record pool bjunkies.com because, you know, we're kind of like trying to figure out what are we going to do with this brand we built, you know? And our, so our first business was a digital record pool. And that was like super cool. But even that was kind of funny because, you know, the school of hip hop we all come from. Be, we're like, oh, we're going to share our music now. Is that, is that what I remember J-Rock? Oh, is that how it goes now? We're, we're just going to open up our crates to people. Oh, is that, is that the game now? You know, and, and, and it was a little bit of an internal, like, we're like, yeah. And, well, yeah, there's a transition where you got to, like, open up a little bit, right? And, and we were learning, and, and, and lo and behold, I'm glad we took the risk because it actually, you know, it springboarded. It was really amazing for us, created a new business for us and a new vision of sharing. And, you know, I think it made me think, like, dude, I think all this keep it real and all our secrets was wrong you know i mean i'm like i think it's time to share and that's that's well, what inspired yeah. the school because that's know? that's like you know you keep people isolated and you don't want to you know teach people shit you know that, that then it can't go on from there like if you put For up sure. the wall and say you know what fuck no i'm not gonna teach him shit you can't expect much from you them can't complain you yeah. can't complain don't, don't complain yeah, yeah if you ain't gonna teach them 
don't complain about what they turn into. Yeah, you know and, and, you know, and that really bums me out. You know, I'll, I'll run into, you know, I'm not gonna say names, but you know, you talk to a cat that is DJing as long as you, and you know, and you know, some people have, you know, aren't really comfortable still with the ideas of us teaching and giving, like, giving away the game. <laughs> you know, and it makes me laugh. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, hey, it's it's really not like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, Bruce Lee for giving away the game. Yeah, you know, and, but, I, and I'm over here. I'm like, fuck that. I'm I'm gonna pass it down correctly instead of me getting on the internet and whining about how DJing is. You know what? I'm gonna actually like teach it properly because there's still not enough zeros and ones on the internet youtube is still not going to tell you you're you're fucking up that's you're, right you're off beat your hand is wrong that's right you know and uh like they i ain't said, gonna clean you up yeah at all well yeah. you know it's up to us to share our culture right why is it uh, every exactly. genres or any other uh, any uh ethnic cultures or stuff they always show share everything and then hip-hop is the only one where we just like we don't share and they always complain. You know, it's crazy how the, the hip hop game is, man. You go from student to teacher. Because you guys are now teachers. You guys at one point were obviously students of the game. Now you sure. guys are teachers of the game. Even though we, you know, we put our years in, we keep learning. Yeah, so, because yeah, we have to, because we got to adapt to sort of figure out how we teach these this new generation sure. this culture you know what i mean if they want to learn because some of them you know they're trying to skip levels they're gonna do what they're gonna do yeah, yeah. they're gonna do what they're gonna do hey man i want to thank y'all for jumping in the box hey. i know you got a class to teach right i literally am gonna go teach class <laughs> yeah literally <laughs> go get it man honor to be here thank you man yeah. two of my no. favorite Hey, two of the right best here. that ever did it. Yes. Really, really real talk. DJ Babu, DJ Retmatic. Um, let them know about the school, the address for the school. Yeah, so for, uh, so for our record pool, check us out at www.beatjunkies.com. For our online school, go to beatjunkies.tv. And for our school in Glendale, beatjunkiesound.com. And also go on YouTube and check out for our better, better building DJs podcast building yeah. better djs yeah. building yeah. better djs Thank go check sorry. out our check out our <laughs> podcast Ch Red's talking about you can catch that on youtube as well that's what's up man it's been another smoke box leave comments subscribe to the channel fuck with the world famous beat junkies all day keep blazing got the heart of a lion soul of a titan mind of a genius fly with the height all your senses are senseless resistant relentless it's what they call you when your grind is endless let's get this they say i'm psycho i move way like lipo got a big crib like michael out the window with a rifle my wrist game on light show i'm backstage with white hoes i got